Welcome to Minister's Message and welcome to our home here in the Hilton Mance. I'm here for a reason. I've not uh, run out of places to go. I've not even been to Tain yet, so I need to venture up to Tain in one of these Minister Messages. However, I am here for a reason because in the last few weeks and months on these uh, episodes, uh, we've been around the Northern Presbytery. We've met the ministers of our own presbytery here. Uh, I've also introduced you to uh, some of the ministers serving in Inverness here in the Highlands uh, and also some other guys from around the denomination. But as we approach the 50th episode of Minister's Message, I thought we would do something quite special over the next two weeks. I want us to uh, go on mission. That's why I'm here in our home, just to sort of emphasize, most of us who, uh, as Christians, will serve the Lord in and from our homes, from our home villages, and from our hometowns. We will love our neighbor and we'll seek to show the love of God, to spread the good news of the gospel to those that we live amongst, those we uh, see in the shop and around the town. But for some people, the Lord calls them further afield. And I want us to spend some time uh, meeting uh, different individuals and families. Some are missionaries in different countries around the world. Some have just been called to other congregations uh, far away from us here in Tain and Fern. So I want us to venture to uh, several continents, uh, to go further afield in our own continent, to Eastern Europe, to go to Southern Asia, to go to Africa and over to the States, perhaps uh, one other continent as well, we shall see. But today I want us to go to Africa. Uh, I want us to meet with the Garvey family. Uh, Here in Tin and Fern, you'll know Donald and Ruth Garvey. They spoke to us at a congregational fellowship uh, and prayer meeting last year. Uh, So let's just catch up with them and then let's pray for them. Hello friends in Tain and Fern. Greetings from the Garvey family in Bangor, Northern Ireland. Donald and Ruth, Samuel, Beth and Matthew. In August last year, we certainly didn't expect to still be in the UK one year on. It's good to be reminded that our plans are never certain. Uh, James chapter 4, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. But God knows and it's wonderful to be reminded that his purposes stand firm. Let me give you an update on where things stand for us and some points for prayer. Firstly, let me mention the children. Samuel is now 12 years old, Beth is 10 and Matthew is 8. Their school in Nigeria, Hillcrest School, began classes online on the 5th of August. So even though they are here, they have become fully part of their school classes there in Nigeria. This is good from our point of view. Um, It means that when we do get to go back, they can slot in again to uh, their classes in Nigeria. But please pray for them as they um, are on the computer, trying to do their classes each day, and as Ruth helps them to get to grips with the technology. So what about flights to Nigeria? The Nigerian government has announced that they will permit a limited number of flights to begin on the 29th of August. But we still don't know um, more details about that. We don't know which airlines um, will be permitted. But this is progress. When flights do start, uh, we will need to have the correct documents for Nigerian immigration. Our um, residence permits for Nigeria expired on the 25th of July. But we're hearing um, from some sources that 
we will, uh, people in our position will be allowed to um, enter the country even with um, expired residence permits because they have expired during the period of the closure of borders. Um, so please pray for clarity about that issue. Please pray for Christians in Nigeria that they will be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, sometimes in very difficult circumstances. The restrictions on movement um, because of COVID-19 have um, left a lot of people struggling economically. And there is still a lot of unrest in many parts of the country. Please pray for JETS, the college where I work um, as an institution. They are also struggling financially. Please pray for the staff and the students. Many of them come from parts of the country where there is serious unrest. Let me mention something for Thanksgiving, and that is the Lord's provision through his people of the finances that we need for our next term serving in Nigeria. Finally, please pray for us for patience as we continue to wait. Thank you once again for your partnership with us as we serve the church in Nigeria. Thank you so much, uh, Donald, for sharing that with us. I'm going to pray for you and the family uh, just now. And then after I've prayed, we're going to uh, just share a few things about what's coming up here at Tin Fern this weekend. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that uh, though we are so far away uh, from the mission field in Africa, and from uh, where Donald and Ruth and the family uh, seek to return to. Lord, we pray that you would be with them. We pray that you would help them as even tomorrow, on Saturday, the Lord willing, uh, will hear news about flights that will go back into the country. Uh, and Lord, that uh, if it's your will in the days or weeks uh, to come, that they would be able uh, to return to Africa. We pray about their visas, uh, that though they have expired, that the sources who are telling them that this will still be okay for them as a family to return. Lord, that you would uh, just be watching over them. And we just uh, pray for the ministry that they do once they are there, just to be part of the church on the ground, to be able to teach, to be able to love their neighbour in that context. To be able to show the love of Jesus Christ to all who are around them. Gracious God, we thank you that even we are here as a congregation in the highlands of Scotland and we can pray to a God who has the whole world in his hands. So Heavenly Father, we pray that you would uh, continue with us uh, over this weekend. Bless the word to be preached. May it be accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me just uh, tell you about a couple of things happening uh, this weekend. On Sunday evening, uh, we're going to have another testimony night. So the details are here on your screen for the Zoom uh, code to get in. So please uh, come. If you're not part of our congregation, you're more than welcome to come. We're going to start that just after our evening service. So we'll be aiming for around 7 p.m. Uh, and we're going to have David Ferguson speak to us on Sunday evening. Uh, we hope David to come and serve alongside myself and Ali as he trains for ministry over the next uh, 12 months or so. Uh, just here with us in Tain and Fern. So please uh, come along, listen to David, listen to how the Lord has transformed his life. And in that vein for Sunday, uh, we're going to begin a new sermon series in the morning. It's called This Is My Story. And it's really to find different characters throughout Scripture who, who tell us their story of the transformation that has taken place 
in their life, how the Lord has entered in to be the center of their being. So in the morning on Sunday at 11 a.m., Alistair is going to preach on Mary from Bethany. And then in the evening, uh, I'm going to be preaching from Acts chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at the ascension of Jesus Christ. The sermon is entitled, Heaven's Door. So please come uh, this weekend, come under the Word of God, and may you be blessed as you hear it. May, as we've prayed, the Holy Spirit come and speak to each one of us. May the Lord be with you.